Die Bag Builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rock Sewing Patterns and thank you for joining me. Today I wanted to share with you my free tutorial for a no hardware coin purse. It's a really quick and simple sew. The pattern pieces are free to download, there's no measuring required. Just download them from the link below and there's also some more information on the best fabrics to use. It's a really quick and simple project. No hardware required, you don't need snaps or magnetic clasps to fasten it, we're going to use a strap. Fully lined inside with two pockets, a larger side for your cash and your phone, a smaller pocket to the front for credit cards and receipts, all securely fastening with a matching strap. Best fabrics to use are quilting cottons, upholster fabrics, canvas, anything that's medium to lightweight will be perfect for this. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, there's lots more tutorials going forward. And let's move on with the project. So I'm all cut out and ready to go. I'm using quilt weight cottons today. Um, you can get a great variety of prints obviously in that, so you can make some really nice purses. Um, I've cut out my pattern pieces, I've actually fused everything with medium weight fusible interfacing which gives it a firmer appearance, it better handle, it stops it creasing in future use and it makes it more durable. So I've cut out two pieces of piece A, one's my outer and one's my lining. I've cut out piece B which is my large outer pocket, piece C which is my small outer pocket and piece D which is my closure strap. With the pocket pieces you'll find that the pattern pieces say cut on fold and what that means is you lay the pattern piece on the fold of the fabric so it's double so when you open it out it's double the size you started. So we're ready to get started and we're going to start with the closure strap. So take your closure strap to the ironing board and fold it in half along its length. Make a nice firm crease so you can see that crease when you open it out again. Open it out and use that middle crease as a guide to fold the sides in to meet that crease. Then fold it all back over on itself to conceal all the, hard, the raw edges. So now I'm just going to top stitch along both edges to secure it down. It'll be about one eighth of an inch or three mil from each side. I'm just using a regular needle in here and a regular press a foot and I've got a stitch length of about 2.6 I'd go larger if it was a heavier weight fabric so keeping our stitch length nice and even there's our closure strap finished and trim up all your edges as you go makes it a lot easier at the end you've got a nice tidy bag so you can see that's a nice firm strap ready for use our next port of call is the pocket so i've got a large outer pocket and a small outer pocket take those to the ironing board and fold them in half across the width and along that folded edge we're going to top stitch again just about an eighth of an inch or three mil away from the top let's do that on the second pocket and we're ready to use those, trim them up. Put any raw edges. Okay, so let me make sure I've got the print the right direction. I think that's the right direction. So lay your larger piece down, piece B, and then lay your smaller piece on top, matching up the two raw edges at the bottom. Okay. Clip or pin those in place. And then we're going to stitch down both sides, uh, in fact down both sides and the bottom just to hold everything in place. I haven't got my clips here with me, I'll just use a pin at the moment. So that's the front pocket of your purse made already, nice and easy. Trim your threads. And then our next job is to attach the closure strap. So I'm going to lay that down on top and I'm going to put that 
the same distance down so it just eyeball it so it looks like it's a nice distance the same from the pocket top on this side so I'll pin that in place And again, I'm just going to stitch down those sides to secure that until we're ready to stitch it all together. So we know they're not going anywhere. Make sure it's straight. You're really just tacking that in place, it's all going to be enclosed afterwards. So trim your threads up. And now I'm going to get our outer and lining. And we're halfway there already. It's a nice easy project. So I'm going to grab my lining next. I'm going to lay it face up. I'm going to grab my pocket pieces and I'm going to lay them on top and I'm going to line up that bottom edge so it's nice and straight and clip that in place. Just temporarily. So we know none of this is going to move now because we've basted it basically and it's nice and secure. So that's our lining piece behind. Now take your outer piece. Now to this outer piece, I wanted to give it a little bit of um, extra weight. You don't need to, but I've added a piece of fusible fleece to the back and I've cut it down by a centimetre all the way around. So we're going to lay that face down on top. And again, match up all those edges all the way around. clip in place. Now you can draw your curve on there. There is no shame in drawing a curve onto anything. It makes things so much simpler. It really does. And I often do it. In this case, because I've cut the, fuse up, the fusible fleece out to the right size, a centimetre down, I can actually use that as a guide. But in general, I would say definitely when you come to a curve like that, just draw it on. It's, there's no shame to it whatsoever. So I'm now going to sew all the way around this with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna leave that bottom edge open by approximately ooh, four inches, four and a half inches, 11 centimeters. So really you're just gonna turn the corners with the stitching and then stop. So let's go right ahead and do that. beginning and end and there you go so we're virtually there now we're now going to turn that through I will just trim up the corners um, I'm going to clip over the top I'm going to use pinking shears because it makes things a lot simpler um, trim the corners off and I'm going to press that hem up on both sides because it gives a, a much neater finish afterwards So I've trimmed it all the way around, taken it down to just a few mil, quarter of an inch. I've actually used pinking shears on the top. If you don't have pinking shears, just clip the curve so it'll turn nicely. And on the bottom, I've turned up the two hemmed edges, just with steam, just to make a, a sharper edge for when I turn it through. So I'm gonna put my hand in and I'm actually gonna turn that through now. So. It's not too bad. Plenty of room in there. Get your fingers in and push out that curve. Bring it all through. Push out the corners. If you've trimmed the corners nicely, they should push out nice and sharp. But tend to use your fingers. I mean, I do have a, a an implement like this which I often use if it's a really tight corner but to be honest it's better if you can just do it with your fingers because then you're not risking pushing 
a point through the corners at any point. Fingernails are good. So we're through and you can see that that edge will turn nice and neatly inside when we're ready. But I just want to go back to the ironing board and press that flat and make sure that that curve is nice and straight and pressed out lovely. So I've pressed my purse nice and flat. I've pressed that curve out. I've had my finger in right in the edges and pushed it out. Pressed it all flat, made sure that those edges are pressed ni neatly inside. And all that's left to do now is trim up any row, any thread ends. There we go. There's always another thread end just when you think you're finished. Um, and we're going to stitch across that bottom edge. Make sure, because we don't want any any um, seams or raw edges showing inside, make sure everything's tucked in there and that you have caught the lining in from inside. So we're just going to stitch across there with a quarter of an inch, six millimeter seam allowance. edges and that has sealed and closed everything inside there's no raw edges and beautifully finished you've got your two pockets inside your large pocket and your small pocket for credit cards or back pocket for phone you just fold that down over and tuck that into your closure strap and you have a beautiful coin purse without hardware. Now you can top stitch the curve, You're perfectly free to do that. Don't carry the top stitching down the sides because that will impede the flap going into the closure strap but um, a little top stitching along the flap would look nice too. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube tutorial. I hope you made a beautiful little coin purse without hardware, which is always a bonus. I'll have lots more free tutorials going forward, so please do subscribe to my channel. You can click the subscribe button or you can click the bell or both, so it'll remind you when I've issued a new video. I also have a Facebook board for help and support with my patterns and to post your pics, chat about bag making. You're welcome to join. I'm usually around most of the time. So please do join me again. Look forward to seeing you soon. What are you waiting for? Go so.